Hey, everybody. Thank y'all so much for everybody who's actually going to ping in. I know a couple people are probably going to be late because they're at a dog show right now. Um, we got Fib bathed out and brushed out today. Uh, we do bathe in dog mist, so that's what we use. Harden our ear stains. We do have breast stains in our ears. I'm sorry. We're working on it. Um, but I have this coat prepped to spray all of this up to put the wigs in, do the bubble, everything. And then we're going to finish it with how I scissor my top knots at each show that I'm at. Um, he's not shaved in pattern yet or anything. I haven't done anything like that. But after this live, I will be going through and I'll be show grooming him for our next show. So I'll post photos of that later. Um, but first, my biggest thing is prep, prep, prep. Make sure you wash your dog, shampoo it, let that sit, rinse it, rinse it again. Wrap it in towels, let it wick all that heavy water off. Once all that's off, I start blow drying my dog from the feet up. I go to the shoulders and then I stand dry my rosettes, my tail, and all the way up my head and my ears. Um, so that's all done. We're going to get him ready. I've got everything that I would use for a spray up right here. Um, I have my wigs, I've got my bands, my combs, my parting needle, all of my sprays, everything. Always have it as close as you can get it when you're at the show or, or you're doing your competition. You don't want it far from hand because you want them to be as still as possible while you're doing this. Um, I use two types of pillows also. So I use the regular top knot pillow, but I also use a small round pillow. I forgot mine. So we use a paper towel roll wrapped in a microfiber towel to emulate that little round pillow I use. So we're going to start with our big pillow. That's probably where we should turn the table. We're going to bring him up. And I'm going to get these little safety bands out for now. These are only wrapped around one time, so it's just so he could run around the shop while we got all this ready. Um, here. So, and every time before you start this, comb it out and brush it out again just in case. So, my spray up combs that I use, I use the Madon combs. These are like 10 inches long, and I think the teeth are an inch and three quarters or an inch and a half. This is what I use on my spray ups. So all of this, you want to be able to get your comb through it because you're going to be combing it up as you're spraying. I know I'm getting right into this because I don't know how long it's going to take me since we have not sprayed him up since the nationals. We've just been growing hair. So everything's a little different when it comes to the bubble. Some people use a white band on white dogs. Some people use a black band on their white dogs. I use a black band. I use the teeny tiny little ones. Thanks, Mike. I use the really, really tiny ones. Um, I want to say these are the medium weight rubber bands. And typically, I put these in my mouth, so bear with me. Get your party needle. And somebody taught me when I'm looking at the bubble for my dog. Mike's going to come a little closer here, y'all. Keep talking. When I'm doing the bubble on my dog, I want to grab my hair and kind of imagine how big I want that bubble to be. Do I want it smaller? Do I have a more elegant poodle? Do I have a larger face? So I figure out by grabbing the hair, whereabouts my part's going to be. Bib's trying to look at his dad. So I like just behind the eye and I go straight across the skull to the other side, just behind the eye. I know you haven't sprayed up in a while, buddy. So I want this line to be as straight as possible. Every time you make a part, you want that part as straight as possible. Now, mind you, as I'm giving you the tips and tricks that I use, these are just what I use. He likes to hold his head sideways. My rubber band, I come up the nose. I don't know why I do it, but I'll come up the nose in front of the eyes and I grasp my hair. 
and I go around three to four times depending on the thickness of my bubble hair. You want your rubber band to be as center as possible. All right. So I start mine by pulling backwards. A little because it's not center. Babe, you've got to lay flat, buddy. Okay, thank you. So we're a little bit more center. Then I'm going to hold my bubble. I take my index finger and my thumb. And from the two eye corners, I come up about halfway, grab that hair, and I pull. So I'm about there. I've just got a few things to change. But when I do my dog's bubble, I never want his bubble to be smaller than the width of his eyes. I always want it to be a little bit wider because you're framing that face. And if you don't frame that properly, then your dog's going to have this bug-eyed look where you're going to be pulling these up or you're going to be making your eyes look more round than they could possibly be. So let's put him back down. And then what we're going to do is we're working on the apex of the bubble, which is right here in the center. So it shouldn't be flat, flat across. You want a little bit of a pull out in front. And I do that with my thumb and my index. And I just lightly pull here and there until you have a round bubble. And then when viewed from the side, I don't want the front of my bubble to be even with my eye either. So I want it to overhang just a little bit. That's how I typically do my bubbles. So once my bubble is set, I'll come back here and I'll find hair in the back and tighten my bubble band down to the skin. A lot of people ask how we get our bubbles to stay in place, and that's how. By holding and pulling from the back to get that down as close to that skin as possible. So then we're going to take this and we're going to take a rubber band just once or twice to keep that out of our way. Now, I don't spray my bubble just yet. Reason being is if we're doing our spray up and he decides he's going to do something crazy and crunch it, I can always go back and I can fix it again. Because if you hairspray it now and you've got to refix it, then you're going to be breaking hair by trying to comb through that hairspray to fix it. So from here, we're going to go into how I do my sections. So poodle, brid poodle wigs and the sections can't go past the occiput. So once you find your occiput, you can separate it in your mind how many wigs you can fit in there. Typically, I do three to four wigs for him. So that's what we're going to do today is four. I have all of my wigs washed, brushed, and combed, and then put in the order that I'm going to be using them. So I line my wigs up in the order that they're going to go in. I don't use wigs for length. I only use them as a filler. If you're using the wigs for length on your top knot, then you need to grow some more hair. So let's see, we're about here. So we're probably looking at one finger width per section and we're growing some hair in. So pardon us right there. So we're gonna come in straight across the top, come up, part right here. Make sure our line is nice and straight. You want your sections to be even. Try not to make any one section bigger than the other. I like to keep combs on hand to hold the hair back from what I'm working on. So when I'm doing my wigs and my sections, there's a couple of different ways people do it. I part my sections in half. I stick my wig in between and then I bring my two pieces together in front and behind the wig. It covers the wig bands pretty well, and it also blends into the dog's current hair really nicely. So I take my parting needle, I part halfway, evenly all the way across.
no fear. Yeah, really good. I get my first wave. We go in, we grab the hair behind, we add it. This is tricky. It takes a little bit of practice. Making sure that your wig stays in the two sections of hair. Get your rubber band on there. So now, unless you really know what you're looking at, you can't tell that there's a wig in there until you start feeling it. You don't want to be able to pull the top knot to the side and see wig rubber bands. So I like to cover that, and this is how I do it. It also makes it look very natural. So I always do two rubber bands in here, just in case you get one of those weak ones and it pops, and that's not going to be pretty in the rain. So there we go. That one is done. We take our rubber bands that are holding our wigs out. I got a question. What's the question? Just being said things. How do you smooth? <clears throat> how do you smooth sticky outies? I haven't found a solid solution yet. So sticky outies. That's always going to be a pain. Um, when I first started doing this, I shaved my lines way too high on my first ever poodle. I went from the eye corner to the ear opening. And then when I went in to put my little cheater puppy bands in, my shave line ended up being well above the cheekbone right here. So I learned that when I first start my dogs out, I shave at a downward angle towards the front of the ear. And that way I have more hair as it grows. When you pull it up into the band, it's a fuller amount of hair, but when you've gone too high or you have sticky outies, you can hairspray it a little bit. You can try and use some, some um, stick them up paste like Shizu's and Maltese use for the pieces right here in their bubble or let it grow. When I have sticky outies like this, I don't even try and spray them in because typically your top knot will hide it. And when the judge is looking underneath that, they're looking at your dog's back skull and their face. They're not really paying attention to those sticky outies. If they're looking at those sticky outies and they're they're dismissing you based on those sticky outies, that's a whole nother ball game. But for me, sticky outies right here on the side, I don't really worry about them too much. Um, it does not detract when you have a nice full top knot. If you're a puppy, you're growing hair. Don't trim it, let it grow. Just baby it and talk to it and just let it grow. Um, I will do another video on how I do my face shaves when I groom my other dog. I can probably do a quick one uh, when I groom her her next time and I will make sure to tag you in that. So if we can write her name down so I can remember that. So we have a little bit of humidity in here. I'm sorry if I didn't perfectly answer your question but I'm gonna give you a demo of how I combat that. And I'll also go over what I do with huge sticky outies if I'm able to when I'm doing my spray up. Cause he has a few. So our next section, again, about one finger's width. Cause I have about four fingers from where I do my bubble to my occiput. And as people are coming in, we are going to be posting this to my YouTube channel. So if y'all didn't catch the beginning of it, you'll be able to go back and watch it. And we'll be doing closed captions as well. So again, my section, divide it in half. My comb to separate my other hair. I can let that flop. I have my second wig and I go right in the center. I follow the center line of the skull all the way back. So we're in. Combine our two sections of hair. And making sure that you're doing that rubber band over your wig bottom. The base of your wig should always be under that rubber band. If it's not, your wig is going to come out. 
So we got that one in there. And I make sure that my skin is not too tight. I don't want my dog to be irritated. And make sure your wig base is standing up. And make sure that it's not poking backwards or to the side. If the base of your wig, hey, my, can you come in right here? If the base of your wig, that little piece right there is the bottom, is leaning back and coming out or leaning to the side, when you do your spray up, this wig is going to want to naturally go this way. So try and make sure that that base is to the skull. Make sure it's standing up. It's very, very important because you don't want a beautiful spray up in the front and a beautiful spray up in the back. And then this one piece be always leaning to the side because you're constantly going to be trying to fix the entirety of your spray up while in the ring. Make sure that base is standing up. So now that we've got two in here, nice and in line, we're going to take these rubber bands out. And we're going to use one large wrapping band, very, very pliable, and put those two together. So now we're going into the area above the ears. So the area above the ears took me a while to master. And for those who don't know, yes, he has some green in his ears. It's, it's grass staining from where we cut the grass. We let them play in sprinklers. These are, these are our loves as much as they are, are my show dogs. So, yes got green ears. Put this one out. So when I'm doing this above the ear, I like to use the high part of this pillow and I let the ear hang naturally and I find out where the top of that ear bulb is and I go just above that ear bulb. I don't want to pull ear hair into my top knot. It's more safe to go higher than it is to go as close as possible. If you go too close and you pull ear hair into your top knot and you scissor it, and then the next time you come in and you go, oh, I went too high, let me bring this down, you're going to have a straight line from where you've cut hair going down into your ear. So always err on the side of caution, and I go a little higher. So I've got that side done. Now I'm going to do this side. Right above the ear bulb. And again, we're going one finger width. So one finger width would put me about right here. Straight across. And we're coming up on that occiput now. Again, I do want to just thank all of y'all for joining in on this. I really do love to share the things that I know. And if you've seen me at a show and you've asked me a question, you definitely would know this. So I go in, I part my hair halfway, as normal. Ooh, hold on, we forgot to put our comb in the back. That comb is integral because when you drop that second section, it'll go back into that top knot hair. So always have that comb or have a person to hold that for you. So I go just like that. I've got my third wig and I put rubber bands on them like this very loosely, the biggest band I can find, so that they're not just flopping around and they're a lot more easy to work with. So I'm holding it, all four fingers, all the way around. I grab that section. And I just add it, just like a French braid. Add it into those fingers. Make sure your wig base is standing up. And come in with your rubber band. Yeah, we feel good. You're above the ears. Make sure you're not pulling the ear up. You still want that to feel natural. You don't want it to feel pulled upward. If it's pulled upward, your dog's going to be shaking its head. Our second little rubber band in there.
I'm going to take our wrapping bands out. So now we have three wigs. And still looks like natural hair from the side. So, again, his hair stays parted pretty easy. Um, you want to follow that same line that you just had. We got a little tangle right there. He's pretty tough on his ears, really, really tough on his ears. So you want to follow along again with your one finger. The back of my occiput is way back here. I could have fit another wig, but for time in the video. So that's supposed to be down there. One thumb. Where I separated my hair on this side. All the way across to the other ear. You got any more questions? Okay. I just want to make sure I don't miss anybody's questions. So, I've got a little piece over here that I dropped. There we go. So, this is our last section. He's deciding he wants to be lazy now. Last wig. Got our comb in place part our hair. What's funny is I've been showing puppies for so long now that working with the long hair on the adults has gotten difficult. What we got so far? Hey, Alex, I see you post a lot. You are always ready with questions, sir. There we go. Here. We're going to take these bands out, and our wigs are complete. All of our wigs are now in, and our hair still looks nice and natural. It's really important um, to really, really color match your wigs as much as you can. Uh, right now, he's wearing his father's hair, so I was very lucky. So our texture and our hair color is a good match. So once you've put your wigs in and you've got wigs that are four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inches, you're going to want to bridge these wigs together. And by bridging, you're going to come in between each of these sections and you're going to grab a piece from here. Then you're going to grab a piece from here and you're going to rubber band these together. These are going to be so heavy, if you spray them up like this, then they can begin to part. And we don't want to do that, so we're going to bridge the gap and put them together. When I bridge, I use smaller rubber bands. Um, these are the 3 8 inch large size medium weight rubber bands. And I like these for bridging. So, it only takes two bands per bridge, just like when I'm doing my wigs. So I've got my handy dandy clips here. So I'm going to clip this here. I don't know. You won't fall asleep. So we have our wig. We're going to take maybe a pinky size section using our knitting needle, just like so. You want to make sure you have some of the wig hair that you put in there inside of this bridge section. So we've got our bridge section here. No fear, I know, daddy's moving. 
bib. No. Mind you, he's only 16 or 17 months old. So bear with him. He's not yet perfected just staying stock still on the table. So now we have our two pinky size sections ready to go together. Let me fix this so it's out of my way. I'm gonna take these, comb them together to blend them. Grab my rubber bands. After this, you have a question. Okay. Grab my rubber bands and get down there as close to that base as I can without getting the loose hair in there. Just like that. Then I'm gonna tighten that down. So normally I would do two rubber bands. For the sake of the speed of this video, I'm only gonna do one. I'm gonna take my clip out. Now we're gonna move on to the next section. Does that work? Put our hair back. Take this. Before you go, question was, what tool are you using to part your hair? So this is actually just a regular old knitting needle. Um, I was given this one when I first started showing. Um, I normally buy them from Paws and Tails. And this is a size I, letter I. And that's all it is. Just got some little cutesy beads on it. Um, when I'm doing wrapping down the back, I actually use the long knitting needles. So I have some dogs that I groom that are in coat. So I use the super, super long ones. But when I'm doing the spray ups, I like my little one because I'm working on a small section just across the top of the skull. Uh, question. Are those little bridge sections only wig hair? No, not only wig hair. So you have hair in the back when you did your section. So I, I try to get past that and into wig hair. So I want my dog's hair and wig hair in my bridge sections. Um, and it's really, like I said, just designed to hold these sections together. That's what the bridge does because you don't want your wigs to separate when you're going around the ring and then you'll see the gappage in between. Is there another one? Oh, why is it necessary to add so many switches on your dog? Oh, I'm guessing you mean wigs. Why is it, <laughs> why is it, so ne why is it necessary to add so many uh, wigs on such a young class dog? So my young class dog is about 25 and three quarters of an inch at the shoulders. He is really rough on the top of his hair and it is not thick, not thick at all. He is a rubber and he likes to sleep on his back. So we have a lot of hair breakage up here, even in wraps. And I have to bathe him about every three to five days. But I've always done it like this. I've never had an issue. And I like a full top knot. I don't wanna be able to see through my top knots. It's just a personal preference. There are some people out there that can grow beautiful, amazing, gorgeous hair. I had a dog like that, yes, true, Nemo. But his hair is just not as thick. And when I spray him up without any wigs, I can see through big sections of my top knot. And for me, that's not how I want to present my dog. Now, if I'm showing, if I go to a UKC show, I wouldn't put anything in there but maybe a bubble and one or two just sections back here to hold it up and out of his face. But when I'm in the AKC show, I put the wigs in my dog. Um, a lot of people are successful, successful without them and people are successful with them and it's personal preference. Let me get my little section was too small, so I gotta go back. Make sure I've got some more care on there. Yeah. And when you're going through and you have a wig in there, you can feel as you get into that wig with this parting needle. Because they're very dense at the base. I know, I know. Good boy.
ماشي Let me give that a nice little guide now. You can't look at that. And we're going to go on to our next section. And typically, this is the one that falls back the most. And you really don't want this to fall behind your occiput like this in the ring, because there are some judges that if they feel that, they will excuse you. So this one I would probably say is your most important bridge. Should we have? We care. There we go. We have anything coming through, Mike? So we've got that. This is our last little bridge section. And speaking of showing without wigs, when my puppies are young, young, um, when I first start showing them around six months, um, I won't wig, I'll use cheater bands. And those little cheater bands, I'll do a little bubble and then I'll take hair from just in front of the ears and I'll pull those two pieces up. And that just helps frame my dog's expression by pulling this back a little bit and it cleans up a little bit of the hair that hangs down underneath. Um, and then the last girl I used, the last girl I specialed, um, Hetty, she only had to have two wigs up front at the end of her showing because there was a lot of coat damage that we repaired but her hair grew in very, very nicely. Um, I washed her in Yves Saint Bernard, but his coat texture is wonderful. It's just a thinner coat on top because he plays very And yeah, I could, I could keep him in a kennel and, and limit his time, but I like my dogs to be happy and I like them to be well conditioned. So I'll take a little bit of coat damage and let them have nice muscle tone, and nice tan from being outside. To me, that's more important. So there we go. And then you kind of want to see what it might look like about how much you're going to have. So it's a little short, like I said, but we're going to make the best of what we have. So. Once we've got all that in there, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these ears out. So we're not worried about that because we are about to start spraying up. You can use vet wrap, you can use a rubber band, whatever you wanna use. I'm just gonna rubber band today because we're not actually going in a ring. But I don't want to waste any bit around. So I do the same on this side. And if y'all have unrelated questions while I'm just doing these mundane pieces, go ahead and ask away. I'll always try my best to answer them. Two questions. Yes. Yeah. At what age do you start using them, depending on the dog? So that's. Yes. So if I have a puppy that is good coat, good body, sometimes puppy hair is a little, a little soft and flat. But if I have a puppy that's got good coat and body, I may never put a wig in it until after we cut out. When I showed Bane, I didn't start wigging him until we cut him out. And I did a horrible job. But I learned from a lot of other people and watching other people tips and tricks on how I wanted to do it. And that's how I made myself better. 
when it comes to deciding how many you want to use, it's a trial and error. Um, put them in at home, walk around. If they start falling behind, maybe you need to make your section smaller and bring them forward or try using one less wig and see what happens. Um, I do, if I don't have wigs that color match my hair, I won't use them. I can't because I don't want to go in with stripes in my spray at where I have a white piece and a little bit of a creamy piece and a white piece. So you have to make sure that if you're showing a dog that has a lot of guard hairs, like he does, that you have a wig with guard hairs in it. So, but it is age dependent and coat dependent, but I don't really start till about nine, 10 months at a minimum because I'm not really banding back here. So they're not going to be used to it unless you're practicing it at home. And I try and give it one or two practices, but I'm more of a have fun with my dog kind of person than I make them sit down and, and get groomed and show groomed every week. I groom mine about once a month if we're not showing. I just let hair grow. So do you flat iron their ears? Yes. If I am showing that day, I will flat iron my ears. And that's a whole nother video on how I flat iron our ears because I do it in layers. Just like with ours, we start at the bottom and we work our way up when we're flat ironing. I do the same thing with my dogs and I use a rubber band or a hair clip to section it and divide it off. Because if you get just that top layer, when your dog moves and the ear blows back, you're going to see all that curly, kinky hair, wavy hair underneath that you didn't really get straightened when you just did the top. So I do flat iron when I'm showing. Do you allow eye, eye? Do you put the eyelashes in the bubble or do you remove them? I shave my eyelashes off. Um, I have found that my dogs rub more when they have eyelashes versus when I just shave them off. And then if you're scared of, um, if your dog does rub anyways and you have issues with, you know, if you have a white dog and you can see a lot of black up in here, you can always take a little bit of chalk or powder and a like the little eye brushes, little disposable ones. And you can just put a little bit of white in there to make the bottom of your bubble look more full. Um, but for me, he rubs, he's rough. I do shave those eyelashes. Um, and then I use little plastic baby barrettes, kind of like what we use to, to snap our hair back or something. And I'll pull the little sticky yonis up into his bubble and, and paste them down to try and protect the hair as much as I can. Because he's a tomboy. Okay, so the next question is, always wondered this, how do y'all even go about finding or buying wigs and even coming close to color matching? So I'm very lucky because this is the fifth, fifth, fifth white poodle that I've owned and showed. And when I retire mine, I grow the hair, I'll cut them down, I'll shave them, with the exception of all the hair that I would keep banded. And then I will grow that hair for another two to three months. So I have nice, healthy hair at the end. Because when you harvest that hair, you have to cut off almost an inch. You don't want the, the brittle tips if you're going to sell wigs or use them on your next dog. So typically they come, all of my wigs have come from dogs that I've owned. So each one I've retired, I have harvested their hair and I have saved all of their wigs. <laughs> I'm a bit of a hoarder, but I plan to show whites and wigs do not last forever. Um, when mine get too small, I will gift them to my mini friends or to my toy friends here in Georgia who need wigs as well. Color matching. So some, the two girls I showed were um, real white and it was very difficult on their wigs. And I did have to take wigs from another dog and use like whitening shampoo, whitening shampoo over and over and over again to lift the color out of it. Um, I don't bleach my dogs or anything like that. I just show up the color that they are. When it comes to trying to buy wigs, when they get posted on Facebook, they get snatched up really fast. Um, if you're looking for something, if you have a mini or toy, I could probably help you out. Um, I probably have some that I could just sell you. If you have a standard I don't have a ton of standard wigs because I do go through them with mine and I have two that are currently showing at this time. So I use two sets of wigs. But if you if you join the poodle groups, that's where you will find people who may be selling wigs. I have an 11 month old standard that is competing with, oh, sorry. 
I have an 11 month old standard that I'm competing with in the near future. Mm -hmm. The adult coat is coming in nicely on his body, but his puppy spray up is still very fine and floppy. In addition to fluff drying with heat, what products would you recommend to help his coat stand? So there's a couple of different things you can do. This coat will take the longest to really become your nice, thick, lush coat. Whereas back here on your, your rear shelf area, you keep trimming it short and short. So you have newer coat coming in, which is a better texture. It was the same thing with him. Everybody's amazed at his body coat, but when they put hands up here, they're like, wow, it's kind of soft. It's still puppy coat. When you want to add some body or some texture to your coat, when I did grooming competitions, I would wash my dog, I would blow dry them 90% of the way, and then I would spray them all over with texturizing spray, and I would blow dry them on low heat and blow dry that texturizing spray into their coat. And the texturizing spray I used, I think I have it, I do is actually the eye groom texturizing spray. I would spray this on the entire side of the dog that I was drying, blow dry it in, and then I would use a scissor spray when I'm doing my scissor. When you're coming to the puppy top knot, it's gonna be a little floppy. I never really scissored my puppy top knots because I like them to look softer instead of sculpted. So leave the softness that's there and let that hair grow out because the more you keep trimming on it, it's going to stay short. Puppy top knots, I don't really trim. Let them grow. You're doing a good job. Let them grow. You have to scoot you back. Yep. Get down. So we're getting to the point where we're going to start the front of the spray up. We're going to leave the bubble out. Because I like my spray up. To be behind my eyes. I want to be able to see my dog's face. I'm not trying to cover anything. When my judge looks at my dog, I don't have to pull hair out of the way. So I start back here with your big comb. I go through about two of these per spray up because once hairspray starts collecting on the edges here, you're going to start ripping hair out because it's not going to really comb through well. So have one or two spray up combs handy. So I go in and I take my hand between these two fingers and I put all of my wigs between here and I lift them up off the sides of the face, just like this. And I will keep this hand in here until I feel like my hairspray, I'm only spraying the base, is going to hold it up itself. So my spray ups are a two part process. When I start, I want to come over here. <laughs> Not you, babe, the camera. <laughs> so it's a two part process where I start spraying right in here from about here down. And this is my base spray. And then once I get my base spray in, I go back and I spray up from here to here. So I fan this out. Kind of the shape that I want. It's what I'm looking for. My dogs, I tend to use Artero or Kenra. That's just me. Um, there's a bunch of different sprays you can use. I'll mix it up on him so nobody feels left out. <laughs> Some people can get into really, really heated discussions about hairspray. But his eyes are covered, and I'm just going to go in at the base. Once I've done that, I'm going to comb it out a little bit. And one of the questions I believe you already answered was, mm -hmm. what type of combs do you use, Madon? And so this is a Madon comb. Um, it's the longest comb that I have found that's just even teeth all the way down. It's wide tooth, and that's what I like for my spray ups. If you use a fine tooth comb on the spray up, you're going to pull out a little bit of hair. And I try not to pull out hair as much as possible. I try to be very delicate with my spray ups. So I'm not going in and combing. I'm just trying to lift these hairs where I want them. So I don't use it like this. I'm just using those tips to pull it up where I want it. So now I'm going to bring a section of hair down.
And the reason I comb so soft is because I'm trying to make sure the integrity of that layer of hairspray I put in will hold. I don't want to break that apart because you're building something layer by layer. It's like playing with Lincoln logs when you were a kid. When I'm doing this, that's how I spray. I just one, two, three, and I start pulling up my next layer of hair. And I still keep my hand down here. So you want thin layers, not too much, little bit of air in between them, because we're gonna come back and do a second layer. And then I try and pull my hair up, up, up. Because we're spraying up. So I come again. And we add some more. And then the little pieces that don't stick, I'll take them away. And I still strive to keep a straight line all the way across. If I start breathing heavy, it's because I'm weird and I hold my breath when I'm doing this. Next one. And lift up. And as you can see, you can still see the little gaps between our layers, and that's what I want right now. Question, mm -hmm. toward the end, will you discuss or touch on breakdowns and how <clears throat> and how technique varies for sh oh, somebody else coming came in? I'm so sorry, I'm trying to read this from the phone, guys. <laughs> yeah, and how technique varies for shows <clears throat> that are maybe two days versus four days. Yes, so I can talk about a little bit of that now. When I'm at a four-day show, I will show the first day, break my dog down with a spray and my stand dryer, and when I break down, I use a very large, very soft pin brush. And I'll show you that pin brush. Every two days at a four-day show, I will do a full bath on my dog. And that's on my class dogs. When I'm using a specials, then every day at the end of that show, I will probably go through and do a bucket bath on the top knot. And you can do those laying on their side. Or if your dog has good coat, body coat, and it doesn't absorb all the water, you can take them to the tub, wash out just the top, come back and dry just the top. But I'll go over um, a little bit of breakdown at the end of this one, what I would do to break him down today, even though he's going to get a bath. Again, it's just a pitiful bit. Again. And then we're going to add. A little much. We're gonna have to comb down some of that. So I'm pretty proud of how he's behaving, actually. I'm very excited to show a boy again. Boys are my first love. All the female dogs in my house are attracted to my partner, not me. 
question. Bring it up. <laughs> it is jealousy. <laughs> I spend so much time with them and they still just love you more. And remember, my hand is still under here supporting this front as well because you don't want this to just fall forward after all that work you've put in. How do you do the bucket bath? Bucket bath. If your dog knows how to lay on its side, you lay them down where their spine and their head is on the edge of the table as close as possible, maybe just a little bit over. Um, and you literally have a tub underneath and you use soapy water and clean water. And you can use a sponge, you can use a cup, whatever, but you rinse out that shampoo, that hairspray and then you use your clean water to rinse out the soapy water. Bucket bath's not as great as a full breakdown, say taking them to the tub and washing just the top, but it does help get rid of the huge crusties on the hair. Just like when you see how they show terriers and they wash out the chalk each night, it's the same thing, but we do it to just the top knot of the dog. So once we get closer and closer to the back side of the wigs that we put in, I like to change my dog's position. So I've got about two more sections here. I know it doesn't look like a lot of hairspray what I'm using right now. But if you get the right hairspray for your dog, you won't need a ton of product. So we're getting to the back of that last wing. That should be right there. So now I'll bring my hand out just real quick. Try and find my separation line. Because this is where we change how we're laying down. So this is where I go from using my poodle top knot pillow to my little rolled, it's normally a little bolster pillow, but to my little rolled pillow. And this right here will stretch out all of this neck and let me get to this hair because we want this hair to be out as much as possible to fill in this crust. So we're going to take his little pillow. Thank you, babe. And we're gonna put the little roll and now see the difference. We've opened up this whole section right here. Now we can work with all of this without being hindered with his head being up. So, finding the front of that top knot, making sure we're still good. Don't want that falling apart. So, we're going to find our separation here. There we go. This is where our wigs stop and our all natural hair begins. So we got a little bit combined. Bring your ears forward. No, you're good, buddy. Good job. So this is where everybody kind of differs. Some people want these really big side spray ups. Some people like more shaped spray up or look more like a little figure eight. Um, I just kind of go straight down. So I have a big dog. He's large. So I don't need a ton of hair. So again, we're doing the base. Gonna come in and we're gonna comb this upward. Mm 
working with them. Get good separation. And you can see how wide your top knot is from back here. So you don't want to make your crest smaller than what your top knot is. That's going to make your top knot do this number. And it looks really weird from behind. So you typically want to go as wide as what your top knot is. And that way you'll follow back in a smooth, continuous line. And when I spray, I always spray on the side closest to me, so towards me. So we're going to comb straight up. Trying to keep our line as straight as possible all the way across. Half the time my dog goes to sleep like this. Here we go again. Keep looking for you. No, it did. You're good. And I use my comb a lot because I want to make sure that my hair is up. A lot of people can do this using just those big old pin brushes. I can't. I have a lot of humidity in here, so bear with me for all this loose hair. Probably should put a collar in to took pictures. Oh well. Do it next time. So I make sure my spray up is coming along on both sides. Humidity. Fiddles. This is typically the area when a lot of people do a spray up and then they stand their dog up. Their spray up comes down, has a big old divot, and then goes down the back because they don't get the maximum amount of fullness out of this section. What spray do you like best for breaking down? So I've always, always used Crown Royal, number three. But when I started this experimental journey with dogliness, when they first came out with their spray all day, I started using that on him because I want to see what it will do to a dog's coat and continued long-term use. So my go-to favorite will always be Crown Royal, number three. I'm going to keep your head straight. I do a lot of my spray up from the show side, so. I'm getting to the point where I'm about to change out on combs because I can see the hairspray residue building up on this one. We just keep building. It's probably one of the most tedious parts of doing this. Got a question for you? Yes. <clears throat> On show day, how soon? Oops, I tapped it twice. So sorry about that. On show day, how soon before ring time do you start doing your spray up? So at a show by myself, it takes me about. 45 minutes to get my dog spray up done. 
The first day of the show, I will always be there super early. I don't care what time it is. I need a good parking spot to unload my stuff. By the second day, I have tipped most of the entirety of my dog. So I won't need as much time. But as a general rule of thumb, I like my dog to be done 30 minutes before ring time because I never know who's not going to show up or how fast that judge is going to move. So if my show time is at two o'clock, I want to be done by 1.15, 1.30. I want my dog to relax. I want them to be laying comfortably on the table. And I want to be dressed and ready to leave and go show. So 30 minutes prior is my goal. And 45 minutes is my spray up time. So if you have one dog, give yourself at least three hours. If you're new or slower to the process, if you've got more than one dog, then you might want more time than that unless you have an assistant or somebody who's willing to help you that is knowledgeable in what they're doing. Fine. Stretch you back now. Got a question for you? Your lanes. When you start seeing the buildup of hairspray on your combs, how do you recommend cleaning them? Do you soak them? So I get those little collapsible buckets off of Amazon. They're like eight nine 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 nine, And I keep one under my table at the dog shows and I put water and a little bit of Dawn dish soap in it. Now, if you have Chris Christensen combs that have the color plating on them, do not clean your combs with that dish soap. Use something else. Um, typically, you want something that's really, really soft or even just soak them in water and clean them off with a, a soft bristle brush. Um, your color will start to come off. I've noticed that myself. So don't do that. But the Madon, I've never had an issue losing the plating that's on my cones. Um, no scratches, no ding marks. I've known somebody who's comb fell on the outlet that goes on the canine dryers and shorted the dryer out and the comb didn't lose anything. Didn't melt, didn't burn. They're indestructible. And Tammy was the one who taught me to use the, the buckets with the soap in them. So props to Tammy, Tammy Breckenridge. Cha-Cha is very jealous. <laughs> I have my other poodle here and she is not happy about not being loose and free. She will not hold herself. So yeah, we're starting to catch. So we're gonna switch over. Second cup. Now I'm just base spraying this all the way down. He's going to have a lot of hair on the sides here that is going to have to be chopped off because I have grown a lot of body hair on him since I cut him out. Thank you, darling. Those color combs will lose the plating with other stuff too. Oh, Mine was losing so color sorry. within about three months of getting it. Highly do not recommend. I don't even have a dish soap in my salon. A couple of brands of clarifying and multiple more gentle shampoos. Oh, that's terrible to hear. Because they're so pretty. I bought, because I love the color purple. Um, my salon's purple. My life is purple. But... I bought six of the 006 combs and all of them have chipped and lost color. And the only thing that I do with them that 
I, is different is I tend to wash them in Dawn. Here at the salon, I like to just soak my combs and my uh, brushes. I spray them with alcohol and then put them in a sterilizer. And that's it. I UV sterilize them. Did you already switch over? Mm -hmm. It's my second one. That's what you're doing. Okay. Thank you. Oh, it says look before you start Oh, well, thank you. So we're almost to the back. And I will be at Fitz with this guy here in October. I think it's October 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Um, if anybody wants to go over poodles or wants to attempt doing a spray up at their next competition, I don't mind giving anybody hints and tricks. So, you know, all of this is still loose and that's fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to wait for Mike who's washing combs. <laughs> Stay right there. No, sit down. He's a very stiff boy. So, where's my little thing? We're going to turn our pillow upside. We're going to have him rest his head on that. Nope, you're going to stay down. Good boy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this and we are going to spray it up for the final time. Bubble up. And see, I want to be able to smush my hairspray and it always pop back. It's always my goal. Stop. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, our first layer is in. I like a flat spray up. What? What? They hear the fire alarm. The fire the, alarm. The, oh, the chirp. Oh, okay. So, story. <laughs> my my security system here is really annoying because the fire alarm, the little monoxide and everything, it does all that stuff. It chirps every so often and there's nothing wrong with it. I've been on the, uh, what do you call those? The help desk calls and apparently it's completely normal. So if you like the chirp, go join Simply, Simply Safe. <laughs> We've kind of tuned it out after a while so we don't hear it anymore. <laughs> so funny, now I'm gonna hear it. <laughs> Where's it oh, okay, I got four more. So I like my fans to be flat, um, especially when I'm showing a boy. I don't know why. My boy fans are typically flat. My girl fans are a little softer. So we're going to get into here, and we're going to pull the little board. And see how good we're already sticking? This hair might be thin, but it is very malleable. And then one of the final things we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna scissor this. Why? Are you still getting sharp? Pick it up. And really at this point, I'm using the long tines of the comb to press it together. Question for you. Yes. Curious, what is your go-to clipper for face and feet? So um, I'm a Brevera girl. I probably have about seven or eight of them, but I use a Brevera. Around my eyes, 
I will use the Artero Divinity Clipper. It gets me nice and short around my eyelids and my eye rims here. It cleans up all the hairs around my nose and it gives me a super definition on my lip line. For my feet, I use a Brevera in a 40 and then I turn my Brevera backwards against and go around the toe bed. Any little hairs that I miss, I press on the toe to make the nail come out and I clean that up with a divinity. Um, I'm super, super picky about little pieces of hair being left behind. So the Brevera and the Artero Divinity. And my go-to thing is I take my can of hairspray and I always stick it between my thighs. Not only does it warm your hairspray up, which I think warm hairspray is better than cold hairspray, but it makes it easy to not have to reach from your dog for it. That's not going right Then another tidbit, another reason to stack your wigs or sometimes use wigs is if you can get a lot of wigs in there and your dog has a thin crest back here, then you can always put more wig in there. And instead of spraying that wig straight up, you can always spray that wig backwards to help fill in this gap right here. So that's something that some people do. So we're gonna go down just the center. And mind you, everything down there at the base has already been sprayed up. So now we're trying to attach what's on top. And I know the sides are still poking out. No, you're not getting up. You're doing so good. Put your booty down. Okay. What, Mike? Where are you on? Hmm? Where are you on? Got clothes. <clears throat> Close captions. Oh. <laughs> Stop. So this is where I should have brought my extra large poodle pillow. Why are you so still? <laughs> Sit down. Bad. Right. So we've gotten most of the hair up. We have a lot of hair hanging off on the side over here. And this is what I attack with my pin brush. So if I can get him to, to settle well. Yeah, I should have brought my, my regular little dude. Can you hold his nose right there for me? He's all hunched up right here. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. That's much better. That's how mama wants you. So we've got nice looks so far right here. But now we want to merge what's hanging out of the sides. So I'm going to come over there and work. So you can come behind me. That'll work. 
we've got a lot of hair hanging off the side here that's just out of wake. So what I do is I brush my hair downward, very softly, barely touching. I brush this downward. Give it a little separation in there. And I come in with my hairspray. And I, again, I always spray away from where, well, where I'm brushing my hair to. And then I pick up a little hair. Just a little of it, not a lot of it. You hear the chirps. I'm sure y'all can hear Cha-Cha complaining over there. <laughs> Robin, that's your girl. Here. See, now a lot of this just needs to be trimmed, though. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Give me one second. Just a little bit of hair, small, small layers. <laughs> Saying he's got thicker hair back here than he does up here. Hence why I would use wigs on him. We'll have him lean forward just a little bit. We're going to put the ears behind that pillow to protect those ears. Because now what you're going to do is you're going to get your curves in your mouth. These are my hairspray scissors. Probably pretty bad of me, but I try and grab the little sticky yowies from my spray up to get them out of the way. All right, I'll take care of it afterwards. My table is groaning at me because he needs some lubrication. So we have a break right here. As you can see, this is where your wigs end and your natural hair begins. So we're going to go back. If you have this, throw a little hairspray in it and combine it. This is where my magic happens. So all the little sticky yotties that um, some people just pat down, I trim it every time I show, I trim it. Um, that's, that computer's getting low. <laughs> you can bring the camera over here, Mike. So I still have my bubble separated where that's that's my last thing. But as you can see, you can see where my hair is thicker. You can see the shape that I'm going for. So right now, once I've got it combed up, this is everybody's scariest part when they tell me to work on their dog. I get my scissors and I start chopping. Now. Like I said, I don't use wigs for length, so I'm not really close to the wigs right now. I use them as a filler. So we go to our next section. 
We're going to spray it one more time. Uh -oh. oh, we're going to spray it one more time, just like so. Josh has got to go outside in just a second, guys. And comb our section back, just like so. And you can see, again, if you look from the front, all the hairs sticking outside of my line. Again. Cha cha. Okay. He's going to take Cha Cha outside, so sorry. We're going to spray her up. And then once more, we're going to trim our sticky addies. And if you don't want to trim, you do not have to. You don't have to do this. I just like a really nice finished picture when I present my dog. Getting closer and closer to the finished top. Quit looking sideways, buddy. Scissor again. You don't need to look over there, baby. Nothing daddy's doing pertains to you. Stop. Fifth. Stop. Really hard head stock. And <laughs> he never wants to do what he's told. So he's going to be fun to show. So the last one. And this really is just a very little tippity tips. That's it. Tippity tips. So bear with us as Mike takes her out to the potty. I'm going to let that hold until it comes back so I can go through my bubble process. I do you want to spray this some more time? Stop. Doing good so far. And then we're going to scissor down the side. And I'm also going to scissor in the back since he's not a youngin anymore. Um, he is close to being a year and a half. See if I can see anything on this little screen he's got. Um, <laughs> oh, that's okay, Sam. Like I said, we're going to put it on the, the YouTube page that he started for me. And by the way, this is all props to Mike for getting all this set up for me. I don't know anything about live streaming. He does this kind of stuff all the time. Um, so this is my first time ever doing any type of helpful video. And if I suck, I'm so sorry. Hopefully I'm gonna get better. Did we get a good potty? Well, we're waiting. No, I'm not your sister. And we're waiting on you because I was going to do the bubble and then stand him up and work on his sides. Stop. Good boy. So now that we've got stop. He's going to hold his head crooked. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> now that we've got all that done, we're going to take this little band out of our bubble. And very cautiously 
you're going to comb it out a little bit because you don't want to comb down into the bubble itself. Get you some hairspray. Get you a little spray in there. And same as we did before, layer by layer. Get that in there. sure it's up. Be really careful not to hit that bubble with your comb. And if you want to do the bubble first, you can. It's totally personal preference. Well, thank you, Cha Cha. We appreciate your commentary. Normally, I would flat iron all this to, to get it up there, but close his eyes with my two fingers. And now, when it comes to doing the second bubble band, it's personal preference. I don't think that he has enough to do it just yet, so... I did a single bubble band on him. Fib. Stop. Thank you. Now, when it comes to doing the eyes, these little hairs right here, I like to take my hand and I'll spray a little hairspray right on here. So, just like that. Flick off the excess and pop that on there. Just like so. Close those eyes. I try not to see my rubber band as much as I can, but that's just me. I try to hide that. All our sticky outy pieces. So now we're going to stand up. See what we've created and fix these sides. So now that you totally squished all the hair, but oh. <laughs> so we've got a pretty nice soft spray up. He's not trimmed. No, he's not, but we're just focusing on spray it today. When I do trim at home, I don't trim above this shoulder line. I, I don't trim any of this above the shoulder line. So all that's going to have to be trimmed out. you do? Thank you. Hair clip. So all of this that sticks out from the front, when you look at the dog from the front, is what we're going to trim off. So, Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> so we're going to trim off all this that just kind of hangs out from our general outline and our shape. So holding his head up. From that side, yep. So we're getting there. Can you hold his head for a Sorry. So we've done that. Can you 
can come back to the side now. So we've got most of this done. Since this jacket's not really done, I can't trim too much on it. But when your jacket is finished and you're done your spray up, you want to blend the curve of your jacket into your spray up. You don't want to come up and then dip in and then come out. You want it to be a nice, smooth, blended round transition. So right now we're going to work on the back where a lot of people, they'll either trim way too short or they'll leave way too long. So for him, he's a larger dog. He's got a lot of body. And I went long just to grow hair because I knew I needed hair. So we'll start standing. We're going to cut that off because it hangs past where we want our lines to be. With a curved reverse, right across my shade line. When your dog moves, this hair is going to bounce around. So that's why I keep combing it and keep scissoring over and over again. Sorry. Sorry, Mike. So he's not shaved, but this is still where his shave line is. So for him, I do have a pinch of hair to grow right here. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with where we've come so far. And Birdie Daniel, he doesn't stand like this for two hours straight. Um, this is, she actually just stood, stood him up. He can stand like this. Um, I've done grooming competitions with this dog. He was 10 months old and it was two, two hours and 15 minutes. But I do give my dogs breaks. I don't spray them standing up like this. I like to spray them laying down because they're going to be standing up ringside the entire time for there. So you can always come back in. You can separate any places where you don't have good coverage. And you can add a little body in there. I think for a April, May, June, July, well, 15 month old. Yeah, for a 15 month old, we're pretty good looking. Now, if I'm showing the specials, um, a finished dog for more points, I probably would not go in with as soft of a spray up. I would want something a little bit more concrete. So I would have used more hairspray. But I like my dog's hair to move a little naturally. Head 
And this is where you will continuously find the hairs that are going to fall out when you go in the ring and start moving, is by manipulating and working your spray. I think you already answered that. <clears throat> What's the question? Just in case. There's people the coming in this way. The question was, is your technique the same to spray up a special? My technique, yes. But the amount of hairspray that I use tends to change because I'll have a lot more hair. So a lot more hair, you do need a little bit more hairspray. Um, and I tend to, to like... Fullness, so I do play with and manipulate my spray up a lot. Um, Mike can probably tell you I don't practice my spray ups on my dogs because I like to have as much hair as I can when I get there. The more hair I have to work with, the happier I am at the end of the show day. That's your camera right so I'll spray that up again. So his jacket's a little dumpy. The rest of him is not groomed, but this is typically the process that I go through to do a spray up. Um, one of my key factors when I do a spray up is I want to be able to take my dog's top knot, smush the entire thing, and then I want it to bounce back. That way, if you're walking to the ringside, your dog rubs into you, it's not as much of a catastrophe as it could have been. Um, it's not till I go ringside that I'll start doing things like patting down any sticky outies. I try really hard not to scissor ringside, but I will take my hairspray with me. And typically you'll find me spraying this stuff and then taking my can and rolling my can up the hair. And so, there it is. It sprayed up, but not ripped. <laughs> um, let me think if there's anything else I can think of. Oh, okay. So, yep. What do you get your, what do you get your blocks? <clears throat> what do you get the, the blocks that they, what they handle while you're beginning to set the bubble? So, so uh, this has got my first dog's name on it. But this is a poodle top knot pillow. And these are made by a company called Pants for Dogs. So like human pants for dogs, F-O-R dogs. Um, they have toy, miniature, and standard size pillows. Um, I use the standards. And they also have a new one that is the tall one that, like when I had to use two of them, it's just one pillow all in one. They are a little bit bigger, though. Um, but yeah, that's where I get those. And the bolster round pillows, I just buy those at TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods. And typically I have one for every season. So I have Christmas one, Halloween one, and so on and so forth. Another question. Mm -hmm. What is the spray that you used? So the spray I used on the hairspray spray up is Artero Podium, the black can. So it's this one right here. Um, this is what I typically 90% of the time use on my spray ups. So I order this by the case. Talking about the hairsprays. My other one when I forget my hairspray, which just happened, is the freezing that you can find at Walmart. It's typically on the bottom shelf. So you go looking for it. Where is it? It's always on the bottom. But um, they're about five to six dollars per can. Sometimes you can find two packs for cheaper. But it's the freeze it mega freeze all day hold. Then when I got good, good money, 
if I have money to spend and spare, I will buy Kenra number 25 for my spray ups, um, especially on my specials when I'm really, really trying to get points and win and, and go further with her or him. This is what I will use, number 25. Um, this is the strongest hold that they make for this line out of Kenra. You can now find these at Walmart. <laughs> I used to always have to go to Ulta to find these, but now you can find them at Walmart. That was the holy grail of finds my last show. Um, Do these sprays work on black coats without flaking? So for black coats, our tarot podium is the one that my girlfriend uses. Huh? Tiffany says she uses 25 on her hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I use it on my hair too when I'm at the shows. So I have these small baby cans of Kenra. Um, but for black dogs, I don't show black. But when my girlfriend Tammy has her mini, she uses the Arterium coating of black. Now, if you're worried about hairspray and you are breaking your dog down each day, you can always use the Paint It Black Spray by Chris Christensen to go over the coat to cover up any flakes you may have. Flakes are going to happen when you comb and brush the coat repeatedly with hairspray in it. So remember that. Light touches when you're maneuvering and shaping that spray up with black hair. Anything else? No questions. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. Um, there was something else. Oh, so when you have going over sprays, I use our Tarot Speed, big old orange bottle. This is a dry shampoo, but I use this to give the fronts of my jacket boost and lift and the backs of my bracelets boost and lift. So this was my go-to for a long time. Now, our Tarot makes a product called Big Bang. And I really do like this. I got to try this out with Pina at uh, the Poodle Nationals on his bracelets. Well, he didn't have bracelets. He was in puppy trim on his rear hawk and on his tail. And they held so much better. And I didn't have to weigh the hair down by using hairspray. So the Big Bang is really, really nice. You put it down in at the roots and you just maneuver it and work with it with a pin brush. Um, the only thing is you do need to wash this one out after you use it. Do not leave this product in. Um, this is a really, really heavy modifier. So you don't want to cause any tangles because tangles will lead to hair breakage and hair loss. Question? So we only have a couple of minutes left on this. Um, there's a two hour limit on, on Facebook videos and we have a couple more questions coming through, but we'll do a separate video and I'll post that on my YouTube as well. And I'll put those links on my, my Facebook page of breakdown. So I will break him down completely on a video and then we'll add captions to that because the dryer is a little bit loud. So hopefully that will help the previous question on the breakdowns and I don't wanna go over and not be able to answer questions. Right. Shampoos for shows. So shampoos for shows. Shampoos is a difficult topic because each coat needs something different. Colors sometimes need something different. On him, I use Dogliness, the Immortel line, um, the shampoo and the conditioner. And I shampoo and condition him every time I bathe him. Um, I don't skip it. I don't try something else. That's what I've used on him since November of last year. My other girl, she is bathed in Yves Saint Bernard. She is bathed in the um, the pH balance, um, but for the most part, a clarifying shampoo before you're showing is going to strip all the oils and everything out of your coat. You're gonna get more body out of it. Post-show, any good, healthy, high quality shampoo and conditioner, especially condition your feet, your tail and your ears, um, those tip to be the pla first places you're gonna get mats if you're taking care of this. But for me, I use Dogliness and Eve San Bernard. Any tips for coat growth supplements and products? So I don't have mine on any supplements right now, but what I do use um, for weight gain and, and healthy hair growth is a product called Dine, and I use that on my terriers as well. Um, it's a caloric supplement. Um, and then there's also grow hair made, made by a company called Nature's Pharmacy, and they spell pharmacy F-A-R-M-A-C-Y. 
Um, and you use that for three months on, three months off. And it's just a little powder you add to the food. Um, a girlfriend uses it. She loves it. I used it previously on both of my girls. And I had beautiful hair growth. But I'm trying to see what I can do just naturally <laughs> by just washing and conditioning and taking care of it. Because clean hair grows. Healthy diet, healthy dog. Uh, someone asked, uh, what was that? Spray you sprayed on black dogs from Chris Christensen. Um, paint it black. It's a it comes in a little shaker rattle can. Um, you can find it through Brenda um, Mallory at Groom Groom. That's where I get all of my Chris Christensen products. And it's small little can fits in a tack box really easy. And it's what you can use to re black the spray up when you're when you're doing it. If you have some sticky outies of hairspray catching on the ends of your hair and creating that dull, patchy, grainy look. Spray over it with painted black. But I personally, if you're doing that, I would want to wash my dog out each day because that is a type of hairspray and it is an aerosol. Can't cause coat breakage if you leave it in overnight. The YouTube is going to be the Ginger Groomer and we're going to post links to it on our Facebook. Mm -hmm. Do you condition him for the show, a show bath as well? I do. I always shampoo and condition. So when you have a product that works in two parts, it's part shampoo and it's part conditioner, I try and use it the way it was designed to be used. So if I have a shampoo that is only a shampoo, it doesn't have a accompanying conditioner, then it's just a shampoo. If I use a product that has an accompanying conditioner and accompanying protein or, or, or bodybuilder, I try and use the entire line because when you start mixing stuff, sometimes you're not getting the best from your hair. Um, with the dogliness I have, I've seen, I have very, very fast drying times. It took me about an hour from start to stand dry to dry him completely. Um, and it, I foam. I frothed my shampoo and conditioner, so that helps me extend the life of the amount that I get for the price that I pay. But I'm still on the first bottle of conditioner, and I'm just now in maybe the first eighth of my second bottle of shampoo. Okay. Okay. So we only have about 10 minutes left. If y'all have any other questions, it doesn't even have to be show related. I, I'll help you with whatever time I have left. I'm here for it. It is you. Say it is here for it. I love you. But yeah. Um, and the next video when I do breakdown, as he said, that'll be posted to the Ginger Groomers YouTube page. Um, we're going to start working on that as well. Um, so yeah. Product list they're asking. Uh, I can do a product list and I can post that on here. Um, and I'll also post it in the new to showing poodles. I know a lot of y'all come from new to showing poodles for the AKC, UKC, SCI, so on and so forth. Um, and I know some of y'all can't use some of the products we use in the AKC. And um, so I understand that, but I will share the products that I use with you. So I have done shows where you're not allowed to use product. Um, you're obviously not going to get this type of look, but when you're at those shows, this isn't what you're looking for. They're really judging the dog that's underneath the coat, hopefully. Um, but yes, I will do product lists and what I use it for. How do you foam shampoos? How do I froth shampoos? So I have this little egg beater. I'll also post that, um, that I got from Amazon. Um, I think now Pet Store Direct is also selling them, but I use about 19 parts water, one part shampoo. And it froths it up just like you would froth the, uh, what do you, what do you, how do you make the, the meringue when you make meringue from egg, egg whites? It froths it up into like a shaving cream density. And so he's bringing out the little egg beater that I use. So I will post a link to this from Amazon on my Ginger Groomer page. And I've already shared it to the other Facebook group for new to showing, but I will share it again as well. And just so you know, for standard and full coat like this, it takes about two of those. So it's about two tablespoons of shampoo. And for conditioning, when I condition, I condition the whole body. It takes me about one and a half tablespoons. Um, so one and a half of those to condition the body. Do you breed coodles? Yes, I do. This is actually my first personal bread buy. Um, this boy right here, um, Robin, who's also watching this, has my first bread buy girl. And then, 
<laughs> but um, uh, this, these are my fifth, sixth, and seventh poodles that I'll be showing. Um, I think anybody can do it with enough patience and dedication and an open mind to learning. Um, I'm not one. I don't take criticism to heart. I take what I can get from it and I improve from there. So don't think people are always trying to hurt your feelings if they're, if they're telling you what they would change. Just say, okay, take what you can use from it and move on, move forward. That's how I do it. Next question. Do you have any letters plan? I currently city do. It depends on Mike and I's schedule. We may have a litter planned um, early next year and also late next year, um, both from his mother. Um, I may possibly do a repeat breeding of this litter. And then I have another litter possibly planned for, I want to say it's, she should come in July or August. So November, December um, puppies for next year out of my last girl that I showed. If you go to my page, you'll see pictures of her. Well, now I keep him relaxed. Sorry. It just looks weird. I know, but it keeps him nice and relaxed. It keeps him from hunching up on the table. So I always rub them up and forth. And it also gets him used to when the judges do this too. So. Would you be able to show a video on how to flat iron in a future video? Yes, that's actually one of the things I did mention earlier if you, if you weren't in. So I will do another video on how I flat iron ears because I have an entire process for that as well. Um, puppy ears, I don't really flat iron it too much. I want my soft puppy look. The next time I have puppies, I'll do a puppy spread video. But for ears like his, I would flat iron starting from the base hairs in the back and work my way up and outward. Any suggestions for a toy who picks, uh, picks her top knot, no leaves, or ear problems? Is she picking at it or is she scratching at it? If you could answer. We'll wait for the answer. Uh -huh. um, well, I'll move on to the next question. Do you expect only whites for those litters? So these next two, the next one, yes, only whites. But the next one after that, possibly whites and blacks. And then my third plant litter with the girl that I'm showing now will be whites and blacks. So it'll be my first time doing a color other than white. Uh, then Ronell said scratching. Scratching. So if she's scratching, there could be a little couple of things. It could be that there might be some product from the shampoo or conditioner not washed out. It also could be that your wraps or bands are too tight. So maybe try a different size band, or if you're wrapping, try banding instead in the long, when they look like a little unicorn. Um, so try alternative styles. Sometimes you need to go from having one straight line of wraps or bands to sometimes two to where they look like a little, what do they call those, triceratops? So you'll have two rows of bands going down. And it depends. Every dog is kind of different. I can't single wrap down his back because he sleeps on his back. So I do two rows of wraps down his back. And it helps mitigate that hair breakage. Anything? We got five minutes, y'all. I want to give you as much as I can. And we're taking notes on some of the things so that I'll have future content in which to bring forth going forward. So, yes, you did good boy. Yes. I'm very proud of how patient he has been because this is her first time doing this. You said I've tried two rows, but she's only seven months. So she doesn't have a lot of hair. So you have soft puppy hair. There's going to, I hate to say it, but there's going to be some damage and some breakage that comes along with that. Um, toys tend to have more fragile hair. Also, um, when I make wigs for my girlfriend who shows toys, I actually tend to take ear hair or the softer hair from the top of my dog's top knot and make wigs out of it so that the texture matches. Um, try leaving it loose, maybe just doing the front half right here. But if she's rubbing, distract her. Distract her from the rub and give her something else to focus her attention on. And then if you're using a wire crate, try moving over into an X-pin or moving into a plastic topped crate instead, just in case she may be catching it on the cross, cross wires of the wire crate. Wrapping ears on toys suggestions. Ooh, toys. Toys are tough. I'm scared of toys. And I'm getting one. It's terrifying. But when wrapping ears in general, if your ears are really, really short, try banding. 
Um, if they're starting to get longer, then you can take the wrapping papers and you can cut them in half so it's not so much plastic to mess with. Um, I can do a, I know Tammy and Lauren do maintenance um, workshops, but I can see about doing a video of when I wrap his ears. Because for me, when I groom either variety, I'm the same across the board when it comes to wrapping and banding. So I'll do another video on wrapping ears as well, because it's a hard process to talk to talk about or talk you through versus being able to talk you talk through it while it's showing. Do you have an example of the wigs? Um, yes. So I got to pop out for just a moment. But so this is my one of my little baggies of wigs. These are ones that I use that I lash. Some of these need to be washed. But I think I got about two minutes left. So this is a, one of my little puppy wigs. And when I harvest my dog's hair, I use white bands on the bottom because I have white dogs. And then I take a felting needle and I felt this until it's nice and solid so that I'm not pulling hair out when I wash these and I, and I dry them. And I also can wash these in the same thing I wash my dogs in. So I wash these in dogliness if I wash them in dogliness. And I air, I cool dry my wigs because they're not on a dog. They're not getting any type of natural oils or nutrients. And I store them either rolled up in a paper towel. And after that, I always store them in an open, breathable bag. Because if any moisture or anything gets on them, I want them to be able to dry out. So I store them in these little baggies like this. I think we might be reaching the end of it. I don't know. I think we started a minute late. So if there's anything else. Then we got one last question that we'll take. And that is, do people use wigs on ears? So I've heard myths that people do. Um, if you got short ears, rock them. I can post photos of my girl. She chewed her ears off right before we came out um, after COVID. And we went to a show with these short little bobbed ears, like way up here. Full sprayed up, and we went winners female five out of six days. So, an, an under against some nice competition, honestly, there were some beautiful dogs there that I would have awarded. But you can do it, you don't have to leak ears. I don't leak ears, I just grow them out. If they eat the ear, I trim the ears to match and continue on. So, we're still live. Is there anything I want to answer as many as I can? Well, if we do cut off, I want to thank all of y'all for joining us. Um, it really was a pleasure to share. So just follow us at The Ginger Groomer um, on YouTube and on Facebook. This is where I'll be posting all of the content when it comes to poodles. Um, and hopefully when I get the next puppy, I can also add my puppy experience as far as puppy trim and puppy spray up and coat maintenance on them as well. So thank you, everybody. I really enjoyed your questions. I really enjoyed this. I hope I gave you as much knowledge and as many techniques and as techniques and tips. That's a mouthful. Techniques and tips as I could. And I really hope that some of this does help you in some way. If you have any questions, feel free to send us a shout out. Tag me and you see a post. It doesn't matter. I really do try my hardest to get back to everybody. Say bye. Say bye.